Welcome one and all to The Castle, my latest efficiency settlement build for Fallout 4. This was a long time coming. I had so much fun putting it together. And uh, in terms of the way that I played the game, this has been an important one for me because I sided with the, with the Minutemen. Well, I sided with the Railroad, but I'm the general of the Minutemen. Their mission is important to me. And so I really wanted to make sure that I did the castle right. This has been a long requested video. So I'm happy to show it off. Now, before we get too detailed, let's hop into the sky so that you can get a bird's eye overview. So this is what the castle looks like. As you can see, it is your typical 18th century star-shaped fort. It's on this island. And uh, as you can see, it's, it takes up a great bit of real estate for the fort and it needed some repairs. I repaired a couple of the walls. Now, before I got into building this fort, I did some research. I wanted to understand what the real castle fortification in the real world was like before I moved any further. Now, the castle is based on Fort Independence, which was first built in 1634 by the British. And at the time, it didn't really have an official name. It was simply known as the castle. It was named officially by the British to Castle William in 1701, and then it was evacuated and burned by the British in 1776, just before it was taken by George Washington during the American Revolution. The Americans rebuilt it that same year and named it Fort Adams. 30 years later, in 1797, President John Adams renamed it to Fort Independence, a name it's kept until today. Now, in Fallout 4 lore, it's named the castle. Uh, and even today, the island on which Fort Independence rests is still called Castle Island. Now, there's an interesting bit of lore with Fort Independence. Legend has it that there was a feud between two of the soldiers stationed there, Lieutenant Robert F. Massey and Gustave Drain. Massey was killed by Drain in a duel in 1817. Lore has it that the soldiers loved Massey so much that they took Drain to the vault beneath the fortification and killed him and walled him up inside the fort. This story was actually the inspiration for Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Cask of Amontillado. But the developers at Bethesda knew their history so well that if you go into the West Bastion, you're gonna find a staircase that goes down beneath the fortification. This leads to tunnels underneath the fort. Upon entering, yes. if you look to the left, what do you find but a skeleton shackled to the interior wall of the catacombs. This is a direct reference to this legend, this real life legend about Fort Independence that inspired Edgar Allan Poe. I thought that was such a cool little touch by the developers who made this game. I just just absolutely loved it. I remember when I was going through it, I saw this skeleton and I, just, and I wondered, what's the story behind this guy? Well, all it took was me doing a little bit of research and I discovered that it actually refers to a real world legend. Now, in real life, it's not true. The real Gustav Drain had lived a long and happy life as a soldier in the military and died many years later, but it's still funny that they, uh, that they put this in the game as a little bit of an Easter egg. Now, I took a look at historical images of Fort Independence when I was trying to figure out how I was going to reconstruct this. And it's actually a little bit boring. Uh, of course, I repaired the walls, but the real Fort Independence doesn't have any structures on the inside of the walls. So I took some inspiration from Fort McHenry, which was built in 1798. This fortification had a great role in the War of 1812. In fact, this fortification is the site of the battle that took place that inspired Francis Scott Key to pen the Star Spangled Banner in 1814, which, as all Americans know, is the national anthem for the United States of America even today. Like Fort Independence, Fort McHenry has a five-point star-shaped fortification with five bastions, each of which was armed with cannons. But unlike Fort Independence, it actually has a number of barracks on the inside. And I used that as the inspiration for my The Castle. Back to the game, here we are, our overview shot of My the Castle. As you can see, I've got cannons on each of the star points, each of the bastions, and I do have a barracks on the inside. Let's hop back down to the ground. 
So starting on the main road, you see I've got two guard stations posted outside, and then this outer ledge uh, between uh, these two bastions is lined with guard towers, all of which are manned. I have the automatron wall-mounted turret light affixed to each of these guard posts, and I used these beams right there that came with a mod that I have linked in the description to attach the bottom lip of the guard posts to the wall to make it look a little bit more realistic like it was actually working. Um, my defenses are pretty straightforward. I have a tower filled with missile turrets, heavy laser turrets, and ballistic machine gun turrets on that corner. And I have a tower filled with exactly the same on that corner. And the reason for that is because the only spawn point for this settlement is right here. That's right, you've got other settlements that have three spawn points, sometimes four spawn points, but the castle, which is the headquarters of the Minutemen, has only one enemy spawn point location, and it's right here in the middle of the road. So, uh, from a gameplay perspective, it doesn't make any sense to defend any other part of this settlement than right out front, and so that is where my primary fortifications are. There's my provisioner coming in and out. Howdy there, fella. All right, moving on to the inside, let me quickly talk about some of the rest of my defenses, since this is a military fortification, before I move on to the rest of it. So I have these uh, Minuteman artillery pieces on every single bastion of this fortification. Uh, I have them manned, each with a Minuteman, and I, as you can see, I put down some mortars. I, I originally had some cannonballs down here, but then I realized, wait, these aren't really cannons. These are artillery, uh, these are pieces of artillery, and they shoot mortars, not cannonballs. So I removed all my cannonballs, even though those are historical, and instead I placed down these mortars for each of these cannons, just because uh, that's gonna fit in more with uh, Fallout 4 lore. Each of these corners has one, and each of them is manned by a different Minuteman. Now let me talk a little bit about the repairs that I did. For most of you who have got your own castle, you've probably, this is probably one of the first things you did as well, is you repaired the giant gaps in the walls. Now, um, I didn't, I didn't, I, I repaired my gaps with your typical concrete floor foundation in combination with these cement foundations, and I didn't move all the way to the wall here. And the reason for that is that the width of the actual wall is greater than the width of two of these concrete foundations side by side. I probably could have used mods to fit them in there and squeeze them in there and make a really wide wall. Uh, the same width as the original, but instead I decided to make a single base floor width path all, all the way across, and then I used these catwalks, these little wooden planks, to cover the edges so that settlers don't fall down and as platforms for my electricity. I did the same for this wall over here. Although this one is a little bit wider, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Now hopping on down, this is my garden. Um, many people might think, well, what is a, what is a farm doing at, at, at a fortification, at a military installation? Well, actually, historically, as, as, as many know, uh, the, uh, many of the troops would farm and make their own food. And so this is actually fairly typical for a, uh, a fortification, at least in the you know, 1800s and 1700s, uh, maybe not today. But uh, I've got my farmers out here. I have these elevated platforms just outside the wall of the city. And uh, each of these has nine carrots, and I have enough to have 50 food. Let me go ahead and show you my stats. That's right, this settlement has 51 people, including Preston Garvey, who's here. So 50 settlers and then Preston Garvey. And the reason I have so many is because this is the headquarters of the Minutemen. This is where the Minutemen soldiers are trained and then sent out into the Commonwealth to protect order, to protect freedom, and to keep private citizens uh, safe from raiders and super mutants and um, the Institute and the Brotherhood of Steel, or wh whomever is necessary. So they need a headquarters where they are trained, where they can store all their provisions, and so I have 51 people. Now, for those of you playing on consoles, I didn't use any mods to get 51 settlers. Any player can get that many settlers and more using the base mechanics in this game if you use a certain quest that I talk about in another video. So if you use the Automatron Settler Exploit quest, uh, which is uh, involved with the Rogue Robot quest, you can get as many settlers as you want in one settlement, including the castle. So I have 50 settlers here, and they all came from simple vanilla in-game mechanics with no mods required. 
Um, now, I also installed a Settler Uniform mod that uh, improves the mo that, uh, improves the way that the Minuteman uniforms look. I gave each different type of Minuteman in my settlement a unique uniform. Farmers have the traditional Minuteman outfit, including this uh, sort of pea green shirt, these, these dirty jean pants, and then the lime green undershirt. That's the regular Minuteman outfit from the game. The only thing is I, th that I changed is I gave them this militia hat complete with the Minuteman logo on it. I got this from a mod, and I have the mod linked in the description of this video. These are my trainees. These are Minutemen in training. They have the traditional Minuteman hat. It's a little darker leather, and it has the Minuteman logo on it. And their outfit is the regular Minuteman outfit, only it's been recolored to look different. It has a navy blue outer jacket and a green inner jacket. And then they also have the dirty sort of gunmetal looking jeans, also equipped with leather armor. Pardon the background graphical glitches in this shot. My graphics card is acting up because I have too much stuff going on on my computer right now. But this is the officer uniform. So as you can see, it looks completely different. It is a dark navy blue outfit with a buttoned up shirt and a black undershirt. It too has these dark jeans and I have a uh, different leather uh, armor on each of the uh, settlers. Uh, all of the settlers are carrying these Laser muskets as the traditional Minuteman firearm. And uh, the officers are also wearing the Minuteman militia hat. These are my Minuteman artillery operators. They have the Minuteman hat uh, that's been using a darker leather with the logo on it. And then I actually gave them Preston's colonial jacket reskinned uh, using the mod. It's reskinned to have a dark navy color with the Minuteman logo all over. They've got nice dirty gloves and these filthy dirty pants. It really looks like they're getting into some grime. Um, and speckled with rain and dust and all sorts of stuff. What a wonderful outfit mod. And I found that I really do see settlers as part of the set piece for the castle. They have to fit in. They have to look part of it. And I didn't think that a bunch of, you know, settlers in rags farming outside would really kind of make this feel like a military establishment. You see how this settler, when you hover over her, she, her outline is yellow and it says Minuteman. That's because uh, there are some quests related to defending the castle that uh, require you to defend the castle from attack and you get a few Minutemen to help you with the defense, but they can die. But if they survive, the survivors become settlers, unique settlers to your castle and uh, their names are Minutemen, not Settler. Now, uh, they're not immortal, they can die at any time, but you can assign them just like any other settler. Now the ones that die, sadly, they lay as dead bodies in your settlement forever. Their bodies do not decompose. So when you do the quest to get the castle, try not to let any of your Minutemen die. Otherwise you won't be able to get rid of their corpses. Now I do have a mod that allows me to scrap the Minuteman corpses if they do happen to die. And it, uh, when you scrap their corpses, you get marble and you can use that marble to create these gravestones. So I uh, made a little cemetery over here for the two Minutemen who died while defending the castle from an attack uh, earlier in the game, and their gravestones are right there. Moving on down to the primary bit of the settlement, I have the trainees over here in their trainee uniforms doing push-ups. I figure, uh, you know, this is, this is a military installation, people need to be trained, and uh, this is where it's going to be happening. So I used all of this wonderful space on the inside here as best as I could for military purposes. Over here is where they're doing the push-ups, and the way I got this to work is I have a mod installed that gives you invisible mats that you can place on the ground, and each mat is associated with a unique animation. So, for this mod, I'm using the push-up mat and the settler is assigned to it. You assign the settler to the push-up mat and the settler will perform the, the designated uh, animation. Adds a lot of life uh, to, this, to this particular fortification. Now I've found that some settlers just don't obey. Like I assigned this settler to one of the mats and she just stood on top of it. She wouldn't do push-ups. I swapped her out with another one and that settler did it correctly. So I'm not sure. There's still a little, there are still some bugs with scripts generated by uh, Bethesda uh, and I don't really quite understand them. Now, I wanted to figure out what to do with this big pile of rubble over here, and so I decided to, tune it, to, to turn it into a shooting range. So I created this little firing range at, just out of vanilla, vanilla assets. Uh, this is a shack bridge 
Uh, I believe I have a mod that, that gives me this different variant of a shack bridge. And then I just place them low into the ground at, at waist height. And then I use these wooden side walls that came with the, uh, the just the wooden wall uh, tile set within uh, the builder for these dividers so that each of these shooting stations has its own divider. And then I used a mod to take the shack bridge walkway alone so that it doesn't have legs and I put that as a roof. So I, I kind of just assembled this thing from scrap and then I used OC decorator to put uh, bullets. Oh, it looks like they're floating. Mm. I'm gonna have to fix that. To put uh, bullets down and all sorts of stuff. Now, I sadly don't have an animation mat called shooting or something like that. Otherwise, I would have assigned some of my settlers uh, to this station shooting their guns. I couldn't find any mod that did that. If you know of one, please let me know in the comments. But I do have these, um, these animation mats called guard, and they work kind of like chairs. A settler has a random chance to walk by and use it, just like an unassigned settler has a random chance to walk by a chair and sit in it. So sometimes the settler will come up here and have a sort of uh, add attention stance, but they won't actually pull out guns. Then, uh, here's the shooting range. I figured this big pile of rubble in the corner would be a perfect uh, catching mitt for all of the bullets coming in. And then I set up uh, these uh, target, these target dummies that are, of course, you see all over the wasteland. And they just really look good. So I'm super happy with how this turned out. I used these orange and white barricades to kind of corner off this so that people would know that it's a target range. And, uh, and that's it. All right, let's talk a little bit about electricity. So I have Better than ever. a fusion generator way, gosh, I keep forgetting. It's way over here in, no, it's not. That's, that's the bathroom. So here it is. Here's my fusion generator. And I placed it here because it's at a perfect spot to be piped throughout the facility. So this, so the castle came with all of these conduits already on the inside, um, making it really easy to just put down some generators and pipe it through. So I placed my fusion generator down here. I piped it to that conduit and then the water pumps, which are out that window, you can see them through the window, um, get their electricity and the electricity comes to the rest of the facility. Now to get it outside of this interior wall, I wired it through this gap in the wall. So this window right here has some crumbling brick, which was perfect because I could wire, I could wire the electricity through that crumbling brick to the interior of the facility. Now, uh, I didn't, I didn't feel like lamp posts would work well in this settlement, and these uh, tall power conduits were not tall enough. I didn't want low-hanging wires that people would be walking through. So I elevated this pylon on top of some of these little posts, and then I wired it to the Minuteman radio. Uh, the Minuteman radio is right in the middle of this uh, settlement here. I'm going to open up the console so that people stop talking to me, because that's going to get distracting. But the Miniman radio is right in the middle of this settlement, and uh, it's you know there's there are no walls or anything that can help carry the electricity over here. So I did have to build one pylon right in the middle here to get electricity to the uh, to the Miniman radio. But everything else, uh, I tried to keep as few wires as possible, and then I piped the electricity through a variety of different wires to to reach the different areas of the settlement. Here's my workshop. I placed down this terminal. Uh, uh, this is a new terminal. I've got a new mod that I link in the description of this video to give me that terminal. I use this to access my settlement management software and then I just decorated it with some uh, workshop doodads. On the inside here, let's uh, start from one end and go to the other. So you see a lot of beds and that's because I have 50 settlers to try and house. But before we get to beds, let's go to the bathroom. So this room right here already had these sinks in it with some pipes that go up and into the ceiling. I'm, I, I'm assuming that this uh, sort of gray pipe right there is for water because this gray pipe also snakes all the way throughout the city, all uh, throughout the, the, the facility all the way to the water purifiers. So that's where the water comes from. And I simply placed these mirror containers on top of them. I then used my showers mod to place down these chemical showers on the inside, and then used my bathroom decorator mod to put soap on the walls, hanging towels on the walls, uh, little tables filled with um, towels and all sorts of stuff. And then here's the bathroom facility. Now I did toy with trying to place dividers between each of the toilets, but this room is laid out really strangely. I mean, even if I had placed dividers between all of them, there wouldn't have been a door. 
And I figure, you know what? This is the military. There are no secrets in the military. If you ever watched Starship Troopers, then you know that military individuals are showering together and probably going to the bathroom in each other's company. And no one thinks anything of it. Hey, it's the military. We're brothers and sisters, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know. They, these are the toilets. They can come in. They can use them. They're, they're decorated. They have toilet paper. Yeah, there's no privacy, but eh, we have no secrets. We're the Minutemen, right? And then moving on throughout the rest of this facility, uh, we have the bunks. I did I did have to find a place to house 50 different settlers. And so these little uh, this little walk area is filled with uh, simple bunks with their they, each one has their own private storage container. I figure these ones out here are for uh, the trainees. Uh, there are these little rooms beneath the bastions and they're very simple. you know, not a lot of storage, not a lot of decorations. Simply some beds with some storage, a flag of the Minutemen, and then I have these pastoral scenes on the wall. I figure these are the kind of paintings and decorations that the Minutemen would have on their walls because they miss home. That's the entire reason they joined the Minutemen to begin with. They didn't get conscripted, they volunteered, and they volunteered for uh, very humble reasons, very normal reasons. They just wanted to protect their people. They wanted to protect their homeland. They wanted to protect their farms and their homes and their families from raider attacks, gunner attacks. They're not there because of some cause, so to speak. They're not there because they hate super mutants or because they hate synths. They're not there to champion the cause and protect one type of citizen as opposed to all of the other types of citizens. They're just there to protect anyone who needs protecting, to help anyone who needs helping. That's the beauty of the Minutemen. They attract new soldiers based on their own exploits, based on their reputation, not out of brute force or not out of coercion. So the soldiers have scenes from home on their walls to remind them of what they're fighting for. Uh, then, let's see, I need to talk about the main structure. So this is the barracks. Uh, remember I said I was inspired by Fort McHenry uh, to have barracks on the inside, and this is it. I used the new barn textures that came with Far Harbor. And uh, I put some porches out here. That image that I showed you uh, for the barracks had these uh, sort of fenced in porches in it. And so I wanted to imitate that look. And it looks like a fairly sturdy structure. Uh, not too fancy. I have a few eating stations out here for just sort of lounging around and drinking. And then coming on inside, this is the primary uh, uh, cafeteria slash commissary slash eating area. Uh, I used a new mod that I installed called do it your shelf to decorate these wonderful shelves uh, with all sorts of goodies from drinks to crops to food and doodads. And I have these as the larder on the sides here, complete with kitchen utensils and dishes. This sink right here is actually a scavenging station that has been reskinned to look like a sink. As the settler assigned to it will walk by and then wash dishes. Uh, I've got a, a refrigerator and a working stove and then some more kitchen utensils over there. Uh, now these are the, this is where the soldiers come to eat know. and to dine. I've got the uh, tables out here filled with food. Each of these meals is completely unique. All sorts of drinks, including water and beer and a bar. And you know what I figure, look, this, this may be the military, but this is also 2077 or 200 years after uh, the post-apocalypse. And I figure it used to be back in the olden days that whiskey and beer was just part of everyday life. You know, it's what uh, you know, farmers would wake up in the morning and have 3,000 calories and then drink a pint of lager before going out and working the fields. It's what made you strong. It got you ready for the day. And I'm figuring the same philosophy is going to be in a post-apocalyptic world where there's no political correctness. And so uh, they've, these guys are not afraid of having beer and smokes and uh, scotch whiskey for their soldiers to consume. It's just part of being, uh, being a human being in this wasteland. Uh, moving on in here, and this is the den area, complete with a working television. I'm gonna turn it off so that the noise isn't bothering us for the rest of this shoot. And uh, I've got some cigarettes out here and some lounge areas and then a pool table. Um, I discovered incidentally that the pool balls that came with Fallout 4 are way too big for the pool rack that came with Fallout 4. You can only fit like three or four balls in there. You can't fit all of them in there. But I figured this is going to be their uh, recreational center where they can come and shoot pool and watch TV and chew the fat. And then there's a porch out here as well, uh, which is just a relaxation station they've got. They can eat their bowls of noodles and eat their sugar bombs, uh, drink their Nuka-Cola and beer and just have a good old time. This unassigned settler seems to be lounging around. Hey, get to work, lady. We've got a war to win. Good reminder of what we're fighting for. Yes, indeed. Is 
this a better time for that talk? No, we've had too many talks, Preston. Go away. I don't want to hear any more. Oh, gosh. All right, uh, anyway, so this is room number one, and I believe that this is where the officers stay. The regular grunts and the new uh, inductees are staying in, within the walls of the uh, facility, and the officers, I imagine, come up here. Uh, and really, the only added benefit they get is each of them gets a side table that has been decorated with their own personal effects. But otherwise, they've got the exact same beds with the storage containers underneath. And then upstairs are more uh, beds. We've got more beds for some of the officers. And it's decorated with Minuteman-inspired artwork. I saw these in my uh, in my decorations area and I thought man these are gonna be perfect for the castle so each of these side tables is decorated uniquely to try and add a little bit of character uh, uh, to each of these different soldiers you know they each have something different that's important to them and so they have a little bit of ind individuality but this is the military it's still fairly Spartan I didn't go all out and lavish they have a place to store their belongings they have a place to sleep and a, and a place to put a lamp and that's about it then there's a, a little uh, porch slash patio out here with the food station complete with pink paste. Oh, we love that pink paste. <laughs> At least I do, anyway. And, and a drinking station over here. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing. So let's head on downstairs. And I'll show you this one thing that I forgot. So I wanted to make as good of use of this space as possible. And you see this door in this back wall here? This actually opens up to the inside of the repaired wall that I did. So you can you can still see the crumbling brick and stone from the original walls and fortifications uh, over here in this corner and then over here in this corner. Uh, the wall is still repaired. There's still this thick cement wall between the outside and the inside of the fortification. And uh, the uh, Minutemen can still walk on the walls over here so that they can have access to the artillery guns on each of the bastions. Uh, and the inside I'm using is sort of a laundry facility. I've got these shelves that are decorated with all sorts of wonderful things ranging from toys to tools to laundered clothing to clothing that needs to be laundered. And then I have some chemicals and laundry uh, shelves on the wall there, uh, as well as a sink and this laundry station with came with, uh, which came with a mod called Laundry Day, which I linked to in the, des in the description of this video. So there you go. That is my interior wall hidey hole sort of uh, laundry station. And now I get to show you one of my favorite things. Let's talk about the armory. So inside this wing over here, you remember from the quest, uh, you gain access to it, it opens up, and you get uh, all sorts of goodies on the inside here. But they were looted long ago, and you find Ronnie Shaw in here. Hey there, Ronnie. She likes to hang out back here, and I decided to turn this into the Minuteman Armory. Uh, this, uh, now there are, were a few limitations here. So these shelving units right here, you couldn't scrap, and you can't disable with the console. I, I'm sure you could have gotten rid of them with Mark for Delete, but I didn't want to risk deleting something important, so I left them here. So instead, I used um, my precise movement and rotating software to fill them up with ammo crates and crates for guns and all sorts of stuff. And then I used another mod, which I link in the description of the video, to put these pegboards on the wall filled with laser muskets. Laser muskets everywhere. These are the Minutemen. They love their laser muskets. By the way, after I decorated this corner, I realized that Ronnie Shaw is scripted to come over here and lean against the wall. <laughs> So I'm not sure how she gets over there, but I didn't want to move, remove it all after I laid it down. Uh, here's a big stack of mortars for the ar artillery on the walls, and then a huge stack of missiles for missile launchers. Here's a, a nuclear crate. Here's... <laughs> it's a huge nuke. I believe this is for uh, uh, Liberty Prime, that giant robot owned by the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, well, they're gone in my in my game, uh, playthrough, so I'm sure that the Minutemen are now owning all of these weapons. So lots of laser muskets. I looted every single one of these laser muskets. It took me, I mean, this is, you know, I, I don't know how many hours I have in this game now, but all of the gameplay that I've been doing, I've been collecting and collecting and collecting laser muskets. I actually had far more than I needed to decorate this place. Over here on the wall, I have mines and grenades, a variety of different mines and grenades. 
and then just lots of clutter all over the place to make it look lived in and full. Armor workbench over in this corner, weapons workbench over in this corner. These actually came with it. I didn't have to add those. And then here, there's this, uh, I, I guess I'll call this my, my own Minuteman situation room. Uh, this is a planning table. I've got this very cool map of the Commonwealth uh, sitting here. This came from a Pictures and Maps mod. Um, I have this at my Kingsport Lighthouse, and this is the only other place where I have it. And uh, I put it down here on the table. There was a hole in the middle of this table. I, I can't... I don't know why there was a hole in the table, but I covered up the hole with the map so that now you can't see it. Uh, and of course, when Ronnie Shaw and the General and Preston Garvey are in here making decisions about the Minutemen, they've got their cigarettes and their smokes. And uh, look, I got these uh, these sneaky journals, these operation manuals. I put them all stacked here. I thought if there were ever any magazines that would fit well in an operations, uh, in a uh, situation room, it would be the operations manual. And then, of course, a big pile of ammunition here uh, in the corner of the table. So there you go. I had a lot of fun putting this room together. And this was also a huge payoff for me personally, because even from my earliest moments when I first started playing the game, as soon as I got the castle, I kept on thinking, one day I am going to turn this into a Minuteman stronghold. And so I saved every single laser musket I could get, thinking that someday I would fill this with laser muskets and Minuteman costumes. And this is the realization of those plans. And then, of course, as I showed you earlier in the video, this staircase goes on down to the castle tunnels where you can find <laughs> that little Easter egg that Bethesda put together for us, which I just think is such a cool little added feature. Uh, so many thanks to them. So there you go. This is my castle. I wanted it to have a military feel. I wanted it to be unique to the Minutemen. You're not going to get the exact same vibe by going to the Pridwin with the Brotherhood of Steel or anywhere else. I wanted it to have a wasteland feel to it where it kind of feels like everything is kind of cut up and spliced together, but I also wanted it to look nice and lived in. Um, and I'm just really happy with how everything turned out. Uh, as for my water, I have more water here than I really need. I have 80 water and... Um, uh, I have those over here around back because this settlement comes with some electricity piped through various holes in the place. And so I just took advantage of that, right? There are these uh, holes in the back here where this water pump comes through. And I believe it's even a quest. Once you get the castle, one of the quests is to place this down. And so I just went with it and I left these things here and it's piped in through the back there uh, with electricity. It's got a great view of uh, the city of downtown Boston as well as the airport. And uh, I just love it. So there you go. That is my, the castle. I hope it inspired you with your own build of the castle. And I would love to see your comments for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more Fallout 4 and Far Harbor content. I have a few more efficiency settlement builds to go, including the Egret Tours Marina, Spectacle Island, and the Mechanist's Lair. So those are coming up. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. And as always, thank you all so much for watching.